Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, now I'm going to show you the last game from Split Open. Uh, the game from round 8. I didn't play round 9 and you can probably guess why. Uh, so after losing in round 7 to Leidorf, I've, I've shown you the game in the French defense. I got paired down once again, that's how it goes. You you lose against a high rated opponent, then you try opponent, then you try to beat a lower rated one. And it went on like that from the start of the tournament. And now uh, chess db was down, where I prepare for my opponents, so I couldn't see whether there were any games of his online, so I couldn't prepare for my opponent for round 8. And the round was played in the morning, uh, so I just went to bed after the game uh, in round 7 and woke up in the morning, went to the game, didn't know what he was going to play. Uh, he played e4, I played the Karo Khan, and now he surprised me, but during the game and after the game I realized that he is a really aggressive player, f4, d5, and he plays d3. Uh, well, I'm going for the, for the queen of exchange if he wants to, I'm going to be better, so d4, but he doesn't take, he plays knight c3, a full gambit, so e d3, bishop d3. And now I have to develop normally without allowing him too much counterplay, which he did manage to find, but it was fine in the middle game. Knight of 6, knight of 3, bishop g4, h3. I'm happy to exchange my Karo Khan bishop because now I get to play e6. And now I got my Karo Khan structure, uh, which I'm happy with, and got my bishop outside of the pawn chain and exchanged, and it's fine. But here he played the move I didn't expect, f5, and it's a great move. Uh, if I take, it's not that good. I believe. Uh, I think I should push my pawn through e5, so that's what I did. I can defend it twice uh, or three times with bishop bishop d6, knight d7, queen c7. Bishop g5, knight bd7, castles, as expected. The only problem I have is the move bishop c4 and him targeting my f7 pawn. Otherwise, I would castle long and be fine. Bishop e7, rook h1, queen c7 getting out of the pin, and now I want to castle long if he doesn't play bishop c4. But after bishop f6, yeah, here I probably made a mistake. Perhaps I should have taken with the knight, uh, but I didn't. I took with the bishop. Uh, bishop takes, and after knight e4, I played bishop e7. And here he played bishop c4, so that I cannot castle long. Um, if I can get two moves in uh, somehow, then I, I would be much better. Castles long and f6. If I play f6 immediately, he has a queen check, which is not good. So I cannot play uh, f6, and if I manage to castle long and play f6, he's never going to advance his pawns on the uh, on the king side and uh, and continue his minority attack, sort of, and I'm going to be fine. But I had to castle king side, and now he should be slightly better, uh, but with only one variation, and this is fairly tricky to see. Uh, he didn't see it. He played the move g4, after which black is better. Uh, the only way for white to have an advantage is this tricky variation, rook takes knight, uh, queen takes rook, and now f6. Uh, if bishop takes f6, then queen takes f6, and if pawn f6, knight f6, check, wins the queen. After queen takes d7, f6, if I don't do anything, if I just move my bishop, I'm guessing he's compensating for the exchange with this threat, or, well, let's see with an engine. Let's say if I move my bishop somewhere. Well, yeah, he probably just has huge compensation. I'm not. Yeah, he takes here in the end, so his compensation is opening up my king. So this is the variation that he should have played. It was tricky to see. He didn't see it. I didn't see it. He played the move g4, and now I played b5, chasing the bishop away. Bishop b3, a5. Uh, threatening to take the bishop. I wanted to play the move c5 really bad, but I couldn't see what happens uh, after... Wait, what was I worried about? I was worried about something here. Yeah, I was... Hmm. Okay, yeah, I was worried about bishop takes, and then if, if rook takes, then sacrificing two pieces for for a rook and I didn't see if this was good for white or not and then the other move after c5 bishop takes f7 if I take with the king then queen here check c4 and queen takes b5 and I didn't see if yeah probably white is just losing here so I was 
I was seeing ghosts, but still after c5 there are some tricks on this diagonal, so I didn't want to allow that. So I played a5, which forces him to free up space for his bishop anyway. Uh, so c3 he played, and now I played a4, chasing his bishop further away, bishop c2. Now I made a mistake, I played the move b4, uh, I'm not sure what I should have done. Uh, yeah, a3 apparently according to the engine, but I didn't see what happens after after he cl closes the position down. I didn't see a way to break through. So to make sure I can break through, I played the move b4. After b4, he played g5, uh, and he had another chance to be better here with the move f6. After f6, another tricky line, bishop f6, and now g5. Uh, after bishop e7, queen f5, and now there you can see there are tricks on this diagonal, there are threats on the, on the d7 knight, and I mean, a human is hardly going to see this on our level, uh, but a stronger player might have spotted the threat. So after b4, he should have played f6, he played g5. And now I tried to consolidate my position finally with f6. Uh, f6, h4 was played, uh, bc3, queen c3, and now I played knight b6. I want to get my knight into d5. I also want to overprotect or protect a4. Uh, rook g1, queen c8 was yeah a mistake. After rook, g, uh, rook g1, I should have played a3 still. And after, let's say, b4, uh, something like king h8. And a3 forces him to weaken his king. After a3, b3 is much worse for some reason. I'm guessing I can get my knight into b4 and start attacking here. Anyway, I, I think his king is less safe than mine. But I played queen c8, and my idea with queen c8 was not to attack the f5 pawn. My idea was to uh, get my queen into a6. That was one thing. The second thing was to defend, uh, not to defend uh, the g7 pawn with my queen. I wanted to play rook a7. And I wanted to play rook a7 to free up my queen. Because, as you can see, when this trouble starts happening, takes, takes, bishop takes, uh, he might as well play queen g3, and I'm going to have to play rook a7. So I thought it was a useful move. Uh, he was going to defend his pawn, which he did do, rook, a, rook d to f1. And now I have knight d5, I have queen a6 later on, because I want to play uh, the move a3. And I also can play rook a7 defending my pawn. Okay, knight d5. Uh, queen g3, rook a7. And this was my idea. I knew that this was going to happen after knight d5, so now if he takes, I take with the bishop. I can actually take with the rook without getting checkmated. My rook is crucial here. And I don't want to tie up my queen doing that. Gf6, bishop f6, and here he played the move bishop a4, which is tricky. Of course, I cannot uh, take the bishop because I'm getting checkmated. If uh, rook takes a4, it's a mate in two. Uh, knight check. Uh, if if I take with the rook, then it's checkmate in one. If I, take, uh, if I play king f7, then it's still uh, checkmate in one. So after bishop takes f a4, I, I saw that move, I saw that I cannot take the bishop, and I thought it wasn't a problem, I wanted to open up the lines. I, oh, these two pawns were actually in the way. If I could get rid of the c6 pawn as well, that would be great. So I continued with knight f4, uh, figuring that this was a waste of time. Uh, queen g4, uh, defending this pawn, which, I mean, I'm not sure he should really be doing. And now queen a6, and now I was happy. Uh, I expected bishop b3 and king h8, that's what happened. And now he played king b1, which is just a huge blunder. Even if he doesn't play king b1, uh, black is slightly better now. I have huge pressure on his position. I'm threatening this check. Who knows what's going to happen later on. I'm also threatening this check, winning the exchange. And I'm also threatening uh, simply queen e2, because I'm forcing an exchange of queens that way. Otherwise, this is going to be checkmate in a few moves. And once I force the exchange of queens, he's going to lose the exchange. So it's a tricky position already after queen a6. He played king b1, which just loses, queen d3 check, bishop c2, queen c4, b3. Uh, after queen c4, the point of queen d3 uh, check is that after bishop c2, I still have a double attack with queen c4. I'm attacking the a2 uh, the a pawn now, and now if he plays bishop b3 back, I'm attacking the knight with check. So he needs to do something else. Uh, there was an option to play b3 or knight c3. I think b3 is better, although both moves are bad. After b3, black has a minus 10 advantage with a move I didn't even consider rook b8. After rook b8, I was afraid to give up my my bishop, obviously. Bishop takes. A knight takes bishop. Uh, 
And apparently I just play queen a6 here. After queen a6, for some reason he plays rook f4. I and I take here. And he moves the king and then I recapture. And this is the variation in which black has minus 10. I didn't even consider it. I don't think many people would see this. Uh, so yeah, after b3 I played the move queen b4, which is still, if you turn on the engine, about minus 5 for black, much better. Uh, he played rook f2, he should have given up the exchange immediately, and instead of c5, what I played, I should have played knight d5, and knight d5 threatens to get uh, the knight into f into c3, and threatens all sorts of stuff. This is the variation, bishop d3 is the best move, queen d4, uh, which... Well, attacks the bishop, bishop f1, and now queen, ta queen takes e4. Uh, a tactical win of the knight, because if queen takes knight c3 and I'm a piece up. After that, I played c5, and he took on f6, and here I lost my advantage and was worse. Equal according to the engine, but worse practically. Uh, for some reason, I didn't consider g takes f6, which is definitely a good move, because everything is defended. If I, ch if I take with the g-pawn, I mean... My rooks are defending both the ranks, I don't have any issues and my rook is defending the back rank. He doesn't have a good move here, my knight is still much better than his bishop, I still have pressure on a2 and it's still minus 4. Instead of that, after knight takes f6, I took with rook which was just a horrible move. In my defense, I was down to my last 5 or 6 minutes, so I didn't want to waste time. It was a tricky position to play, I calculated a lot, and he had a lot more time than I did, because I've spent a lot of time in the opening, and he played fast and aggressive chess. Here, after rook d1, uh, black is still supposed to have a slight advantage according to the engines, but not after my move. Here he is threatening checkmate, so I can play rook a8, or rook f8, or queen b6, or queen b8. I have three options, four options. I chose queen b6, which is not correct. Uh, rook f to d2, now I have to defend once again, rook f8. Queen g1, which I I don't understand that much, probably targeting the pawn or something like that. Queen a5, targeting a2, and now bishop e4. And now I continued my attack, c4, queen e3, and here perhaps taking was better and allowing this. Uh, perhaps this was a better option, I think it was practically. For some reason I, I wanted to play c3 to make sure his rooks are going to have to guard against my pawn, so rook c2. But I forgot that my rooks are going to have to defend the pawn then, rook f to c8. And now all of the pieces get sort of uh, tangled around the c3 pawn. Uh, the move queen f3 was great, he's threatening bishop b, uh, b7. Uh, dislodging one of my rooks and winning my pawn, so queen b4 defending. And now he played h5, which was a mistake, and now the game is once again winning for black. I can just take that pawn. He had a lot of time on the clock, but he missed this. Uh, bishop d5, perhaps he should have taken the knight, perhaps that was best. Knight f6, and bishop e6. And now uh, I made the worst move uh, in history of moves. I played the move e4. Uh, thinking, okay, I'm going to gain a tempo on the queen, and then I'm going to move my rook. But uh, he has queen g3, and after queen g3, my rook is under attack, my other rook is under attack. The only move I have is knight d7, which is just too, too passive and horrible. Rook h1, and now... Uh, I don't even want to talk about this, uh, I don't know how to explain this. I blundered mate in two here. After uh, after I'd played my move, I immediately resigned. Uh, yeah, I just missed checkmate. I was low on time. I, it's not that I was low on time, It's it was that I had about five minutes. It was that I, I thought I cannot spend time here, I need to play fast. And I played the move queen e7, and I hope you can see it. If not, pause the video. It's mate in three, actually. Mate in three. But the winning idea is simple, and black will always resign after the first move. Okay, uh, the move is rook takes, pawn, king takes, and just checkmate. Yeah. After rook h1, if I play h6, I'm still equal. Well, white is slightly better because of my stupid e4, but it's not losing, at least not immediately. I still have time to defend everything and move my pieces away. 
So that's how I lost to a low, lower rated opponent, uh, lost rating points. Uh, at the end, Split Open turned out to be a bad tournament. And I was just tired. I knew that I was going to get paired against somebody 1300 in, in the last round. Uh, and so I told the arbiter, please don't pair me for the last round. And I went, uh, well, I spent a day with Lucia instead, to rest at least. And made a decision to take a break from tournament chess for at least 45 days, uh, probably 60 days, until I can uh, correct my mistakes and start uh, playing better tactically. Uh, so I'm training tactics and I'm creating a new opening repertoire and I hope to be stronger when I play next. I've also decided that, well, four tournaments is in, in a row is a lot and it's too much. I was tired, I wasn't sleeping well, I wasn't eating right, I wasn't exercising every day like I do now. And I'm going to change that, so in the, last, in the next 45 to 60 days I'm going to train and uh, I'm not going to allow myself to have such a big tournament again. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you liked the videos from Split Open. Uh, starting tomorrow, we are getting back to opening theory. I'm starting with uh, the Grunfeld defense, and we are also going to co be continuing the, the endgame series. So the endgames and opening theory coming up uh, in the following weeks. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to support me, check out the link in the description below. Thanks very much. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye.